Hello friends and welcome to another video lecture from Architects Academy Virtual Classroom. Today we are going to learn about plain cement concrete which is also called as PCC. Now this question is going to be important from your exam point of view because you, you might get a note in your exam stating that write a short note on plain cement concrete. So you can take down notes while this lecture is going on and prepare for your exam question. So let's see what is plain cement concrete. The word plain itself is meaning that it is pure cement concrete without any addition means that there is no reinforcement inside it. So we normally divide uh, concrete into either PCC or RCC. So we are right now we are going to learn about PCC. So what is PCC? It is a mixture of cement, fine aggregate, so it is a mixture of cement, fine aggregate, which we also call as sand, coarse aggregate, which we call as stone pieces and water. So these ingredients are mixed together either by volumetric method, that is by volume, or they are mixed together by weight. Now when we mix this by volume or weight, two different methods are used to add the ingredients. We'll see more about that in further videos. The amount of ingredients used in the mix are called as the proportion of the mix. So how is this proportion now mentioned on the site? So some of the typical proportions which we mention are 1 is to 4 is to 8, 1 is to 3 is to 6, 1 is to 2 is to 4, 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 etc. That means these, these ingredients are added in a certain ratio like 1 is to 4 is to 8, 1 is to 3 is to 6 and so on. So now let us see what these numbers actually mean. So what do the numbers mean? So let us take the example of 1 is to 4 is to 8 concrete. So in 1 is to 4 is to 8 proportion, 1 is representing the amount of cement. That means we call it as one part of cement. 4 is representing the amount of sand that means it is 4 parts of sand and 8 is representing the amount of aggregate or stone pieces and that is we call it as 8 parts of aggregate. So this is always the type of proportion which is mentioned when we take or when we prepare uh, concrete by volumetric method. Now you will have realized that only three ingredients we have mentioned here. The fourth ingredient which is water is not mentioned. So water is not mentioned here because water is added in a separate type of ratio which we call as a water cement ratio and we will be learning more about water cement ratio in a further video. Now do the ratios indicate the strength of the concrete? Well yes, the ratios of various ingredients indicate the strength of concrete. So how does this work? You will see that as a general rule, the more the amount of cement in the mix, greater is the strength of the concrete. So just remember this, the more the amount of cement in the mix, greater is the strength of the concrete. So in the ratios which we saw earlier, like 1 is to 4 is to 8, 1 is to 3 is to 6, 1 is to 2 is to 4, which of these ratios has more cement? Let us take the example of 1 is to 4 is to 8. So when we combine material in the ratio of 1 is to 4 is to 8, they consist of 1 plus 4 plus 8 that is 13 parts. Now you know that the first part in this is the cement. So out of 13 parts, cement is one part. So in this case, cement is 1 in 13 parts. In the second case like 1 is to 3 is to 6, the total consists of 1 plus 3 plus 6 that is 10 parts and out of the 10 parts again we are having one part as the cement. So cement is one part in 10. In same way in 1 is to 2 is to 4 there are total 7 parts and out of the 7 parts cement is one part. So here we can say that cement is one part in 7 parts. So out of these three ratios, now which do you think has more cement? Obviously, you will understand that 1 in 7 is much bigger than 1 in 13. So hence, we will say that 
one is to two is to four contains more cement than the other two and hence is the strongest amongst the three so if we were to uh, establish a hierarchy of strength we'll see that one is to four is to eight is the weakest then comes one is to three is to six and then comes one is to two is to four now there must be a method of measuring the strength of concrete now you know that concrete is a material which is good in taking compressive force and not the tensile force and therefore when we talk about strength of concrete we have to talk about it, its compressive strength so the strength of concrete is its compressive strength which is measured 28 days after casting now why it is like that because concrete when it is freshly cast will have lesser strength and as it matures or at, as it goes on becoming a setting you will see that it will develop the strength over time so this 28 days period is said to be the time in which concrete will attain its final strength so we measure the strength of the concrete after 28 days after casting the strength is measured in a unit which we call as the newtons per square millimeter the similar unit is also megapascal or mpe so now how is uh, the strength of the concrete written on documents or when you talk about it the strength of concrete is mentioned as m10 m15 m20 m25 and so on we also call is this as the grade of concrete so when we say that we have got m10 concrete we means that we mean that the concrete has a strength of 10 newtons per millimeter square so in this case here m is denoting the mix and the number 10 15 20 25 is denoting the strength of the concrete in newtons per square millimeter after 28 days so this uh, is the way that the concrete is mentioned or written so you will see that m10 m15 m20 are also called as grades of concrete now let us try to understand the, the relationship of the proportion of the ingredients the grade of the concrete and the strength in newtons per square millimeter so it is quite simple once you remember the number here you will immediately note that the number here is indicating the strength in newtons per square millimeter so let us say 1 is to 4 is to 8 m 7.5 has a strength of 7.5 newtons per square millimeter 1 is to 3 is to 6 has a strength of m10 means it has a strength of 10 newtons per square millimeter and so on so what you will see is that 1 is to 4 is to 8 is the weakest of the concrete while as 1 is to 1 is to 2 in this case is has got a strength of 25 newtons per square millimeter and therefore amongst these uh, different proportions 1 is to 1 is to 2 is the strongest which has got 25 newtons per square millimeter so is this the maximum strength from uh, uh, which we can achieve in concrete no concrete can go up to many many much much more uh, it can be made much more stronger but right now we are considering these typical five proportions which we use on a day-to-day -day basis now lastly we are going to see the uses of plain cement concrete so plain cement concrete is virtually used everywhere all around us you will see that it is used as a base below all types of foundations you've already learned this in your construction that you provide a concrete base below the foundation to provide a hard and level surface for laying the foundation so as you can see here there is pcc below this foundation there is pcc below this foundation so this is the first use of pcc second use of pcc that it is as a base below the floor in case of the ground floor so you, you can see this section here of the plinth formation so you can see that there is the ground level then on top of that there is murum filling or a hard core then on top of that you have got this uh, dryable soling and then over that what you will see is that you have got a layer of concrete so this concrete is what we are talking about here so this is called as plain cement concrete sub floor base what it means is that it gives a hard and level surface to lay the flooring on top now it could be any type of flooring like vitrified tile flooring marble flooring or any type of flooring can be laid on top of this concrete 
Next is it is laid below load bearing walls as a foundation. So here you can see again that below the load bearing wall it acts as a foundation. Now again the next use is that it is used as a DPC. As you can see this PCC which is laid for the floor is not restricted up to the edge of the wall but it is taken below this wall and it continues below the wall. The reason for this is if there is any rising dampness that means that if any water is rising up as a result of capillary action it will be arrested by this PCC and it will not be allowed to go into the superstructure wall. So this particular uh, PCC in this case is acting as a DPC or we call it as a damp proof course. Now PCC can also be used as coping over top of parapet walls. So you know that parapet walls have to be protected from rain and therefore the parapet walls also have on top of them a, a, a layer of PCC as a protective coat. Now PCC can also be used as a floor. So by itself PCC can be made into a floor or a floor finish. So you know that there is a finish called as IPS floor or sometimes you will be using this in industrial floor as you can see it here. So here PCC is being used as a floor finish, the final floor finish on which you can walk or you can keep the machines or whatever. So we'll be learning more about IPS floor in another video. Right now what we are seeing is the use of PCC for as a floor. PCC can also be used for making pavements or roads. You must have, been, you must have seen concrete roads uh, in many places. So these concrete roads are made out of plain cement concrete. So uh, there is no reinforcement in this normally. So you will see that they are laying the complete PCC concrete uh, on top, the PCC on top of the uh, subfloor base. So uh, this is used for roads, pavements, then for creating pathways and so on. Then it can be also used for mass concrete. Mass concrete means that it could be a very large quantity of concrete like for example what you can see here is a retaining wall and the mass concrete is being used here. There is no reinforcement inside this except for these small dowels. But otherwise this is uh, retaining the soil on the other side by just its sheer weight. So this is, this is what we call as mass concrete. So this, this is uh, all about PCC. I hope that you have liked this lecture. If you have liked our video, please give us a like and also share the video with friends. If you have any questions, write to us at architectsacademy at gmail.com and also share your topics which you would like us to make videos on. Thank you.